Hello everybody. Today I want to talk about the worm chow I use in my farm and how I source it. But I'm going to start out with, I'll list out everything that I use. And I have free coffee grounds. That's awesome. It's always fun when they're free. But uh, I got to let them dry in the cardboard box. But I got coffee grounds. I got lime, just crushed lime. Eggshells, unbleached flour, and again, unbleached all purpose flour, bread flour, and corn flour. Awesome. But, and rolled oats. And that's about all I put in my chow. I do usually have seeds and so I just don't have any at the moment. But I put in bird seed, just mixed bird seed. I grind it up and put it in there. But let's talk about the coffee grounds for a second. The coffee grounds I source from a local coffee shop. I have a day that I set up every week that I go pick it up. So it's all ready for me. We have an agreement that I get it once a week. I can get it more than that, but that's usually easiest is having that on the schedule every once a week so it's easy for her it's easy for me and if you find stuff you can source from somewhere if you can set up a schedule it's probably a lot easier for them to be able to get it to you but stuff like you know expired stuff and damaged stuff they want to get rid of it and they don't really want to have to throw it away it costs them money but if you can just come get it for free that would be great for them and it benefits you too. So that's how I get most of my stuff. But the coffee grounds I get from the local coffee shop. The grains, the flour I get from bakeries, uh, restaurants, and the grocery store. All those places will have old stuff, well, not all, all the time, but you know, you can always ask, and sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. You never know, you might get lucky. I get pretty lucky, though, because I, I ask a lot, and I talk to a lot of people, and that's, that's the best way of getting free stuff is to ask. But on the bread flour, I just use the old flour that I get. This one was some we had left over, and it's just sat around and got old, and we have tons of flour, and we like to cook. But... Be careful with your flowers, especially bread flour. This is 12.7% protein. That is very high. And it's good for making bread, but it's bad for your worms. You don't want high protein. They will get a disease called string of pearls, and that is gruesome. And you look it up if you don't know what I'm talking about. Something you don't want in your bins. But like this flour I got from the grocery store so it was expired in 22 same with this local grocery store expired in 22 I did have some bags that were like this they were ripped open at the grocery store just because carts coming by and just getting damaged by customers but rolled oats <laughs> those are a lot harder for me to find you might be able to find them easier, I don't know. It may vary on your location, but... So I did buy these, but rolled oats aren't too bad, they're pretty cheap. So I got a 25 pound bag here. And those I have to process, because they are not a powder. They are not a flour of any kind. You can use rice flour, you can use azomite, along with your lime. I use lime because it helps knock the acidity down in the bin so if the bins get too acidic use lime and that's just a good natural way of bringing down the acid so that's awesome but how I process like seeds and stuff like that is I grind them and I like my favorite thing to use is actually the plunge mixer and it comes I bought one that came with a food processor it also has a mixer and stuff with it and I use that to mix up like a buck, a, you know, a few gallons of molasses water. And that's, this thing is really handy because 
you can grind I grind oats with it mostly but you can knock the edges off the seeds and stuff like that with it it's not real great at grinding but it is great at you know, roughing it up and stuff like that you know just getting it into a into a, a form that can be readily available to the worms but the rolled oats I love to use with stand mixer I love to use the mill that I got for it and it's easy to adjust and where the plug goes in on the end of the stand mixer you just take that off and it easily just slides right in and it connects and you just tighten it up put the bucket underneath it and as you fill the hopper and it's going it just comes right out the base right there so that is really awesome and very nice and this thing just it saves you so much time and effort <laughs> so I love the stand mixer uh, with the grinder on it one of these days I may upgrade to an industrial one but from what I've seen in them this thing does just as well so I've had no issues with that and this is actually it was free too I had a friend give it to me and he owns a wheat farm but this was what he gave me I do not know how old this thing is it still looks brand new and it's been used like crazy so but that's neat that was free but almost every well all of this stuff here was free except for the lime you know and of course I bought this one but normally I do get it for free so but the lime, that's hard. Azomite, you know, things like that would be hard to find for free. Bird seeds, hard to find for free. You can find it. Like you can pretty much find anything for free if you ask enough people. And somebody will know somebody who's got something, you know. And the coffee grounds, you know, free and easy. It's literally just right down the road for me. So all this stuff is right down the road for me. So I don't have to go far to source all of this. But worm chow is important. Uh, it does help boost their reproductiveness. It helps them process all the vegetation that you put into the bins. All my unfrozen veggies do not get eaten by the worms or anything in the bin as fast as when I put chow with it. It boosts their metabolism or something. I'm not sure exactly. I got some more reading to do on that. But it is very important to them. And it's like some growers or worm farmers look, use exclusive worm chow for when, for in their breeding bins. And, or the breeder bins, sorry. And that's what I do. In my breeder bins, when I was running them, I used almost exclusively worm chow. That's all they ate. The only other thing I put in there was a little bit of fruit and molasses water. Other than that, they lived off of worm chow, and they did great. They got fat. It does plump them up, and you get nice, fat-looking, healthy worms when you use worm chow regularly. But helping them uh, procreate and uh, process other food in the bin, it's, it's phenomenal how well it works. I, I absolutely notice the difference when I use it and when I go a day or two without, because it's a big difference on how much other stuff they process. But that's it today guys uh oh yeah one more thing i am getting rid of eggshell if you used finished commercial compost like i do for their bedding it comes with sand and grit and dirt in it the way it's processed outdoors with the machines it's just going to get in there you don't have to add grit to it but if you're running a bin with cocoa core and stuff like that then you might want you're going to have to add grit I don't know, I've seen experiments done with no grit and stuff in their bins, but none of them were long term, so I couldn't tell you if the benefits are positive or negative, with or without. All I know is with, I'm having great success. And as long as I use my worm chow every day, I have phenomenal success with them processing all the food in their bins. But that's it today. Um, just ask around, you can get it for free. At, uh, just talking to people is always your best resource people are a wonderful resource for getting free stuff I've pretty much built my farm for free I've put in a few hundred bucks into it but 
most of my equipment and stuff like that has just been free. So, and especially the food. But that's it today, guys. Uh, please like and subscribe and hit that bell for notification. And you guys have a good day.